there, there were a bunch of people looking at Elizabeth Warren dropping out and saying, well, there's no more women uh, in the race. Uh, not true. There is a woman that is currently still in the presidential race, and it's down to fucking three. It's down to Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, uh, and Tulsi Gabbard, baby. And, uh, and, and let's not forget, Tulsi is still in the race. She's still in the motherfucking race. She's still out there campaigning. She's still out there getting the anti-war messages. There's just a media blackout on her. And we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, Tulsi Gabbard uh, got a delegate in American Samoa. Um, so she has now officially, uh, at least by the rules that were set in place by the DNC, uh, that she, she officially was, you know, can get into the, uh, into the debates now. Tulsi Gabbard got a delegate, and she's going to get into the debates. Now, the second Tulsi qualified, uh, you know, members of the DNC came out, started making statements of, oh, well, we have to be more rigorous with our rules now. I mean, you know, the rules the rules are changing because because the threshold is changing. It's a higher bar. You got to get a higher bar. It's, uh, it's, we don't want the anti-war thing because Boeing's going to get mad at us. They changed the rules. They're, they're, they're changing the rules again. And, and they didn't do it. I mean, look, if they would have been like, look, Super Tuesday's here. We've lost a couple of candidates. I think we're gonna we're gonna up the ante here a little bit. Before Super Tuesday, if they did that, I would I wouldn't be making the statement. I would be okay. Yeah, they're changing the rules. It's kind of what they do, but at least it's not specifically to bar a candidate. Um, but they're doing it right after Tulsi Gabbard qualified to be on that debate stage, which she should be on that debate stage regardless. But but th- this is the thing is like. She is changing, but look, she's one of three candidates left. Why would you not have her on that debate stage? It just makes no sense. This, like you, you've essentially run out of excuses. You've run out of, of, of ways to ignore this person in, the, in, in corporate media, right? Like you just can't ignore her anymore. She's one of three fucking candidates left. We're four months away from July. We're four months away from that convention. And you're gonna ignore the the only the, the now the second progressive that's on that fucking debate that that's in this race, and not and not put her on that debate stage. They changed the rules to keep Tulsi off stage, but they changed the rules to get Mike Bloomberg on stage. You see where the Democratic Party's allegiances lie. Tulsi Gabbard is is a a, a congresswoman currently serving. A, 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 she's a major. She's a medic in the army. She's part of the Army National Guard. She believes in a lot of the progress, very similar progressive values uh, that Bernie Sanders says. And not only that, she's vehemently anti-war. Mike Bloomberg is Democratic Trump. And they let him buy his way onto the debate stage. Do you see where the fucking Democratic Party, their allegiances lie? Do you see who they're actually working for? It's clear as fucking day. It's clear as the glare that's coming on my camera right now. They tweeted, uh, of course the threshold will go up. It's getting more intense. There's 2,000 delegates that are still left to be, to, still left to be handed out, uh, still left to be pledged. And, you know, let's say even on the low end, Tulsi gets 100. Uh, at the convention, if it boils things down, she might could say, hey, if you pledge for me, I really think you should go to Bernie. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull back in the convention and kind of roll it into Bernie. And, and that hundred might be enough to, to push, to, to propel Bernie back to the top. Because it's no guarantee that everybody that pledged for uh, Biden and uh, Booty Googie, uh, Mayo Pete, you know, Klobuchar, Warren, uh, you know, and, and there were, uh, 
they didn't really... I mean, 26, I think, is what Mayo Pete got. I don't know. I can't even... I don't even remember how many Klobuchar Warren got. I don't think it was it was that high in the uh, in the numbers. But at this point, I mean, all together, even if all of them decided to coagulate their fucking delegates, I don't think I don't think it'd work. So they got to do some other shit. And it's to make sure that this lady's not on stage so she can't do that. So she can't acquire uh, delegates. And here's the thing. Every time she's been on the debate stage, she's been the most uh, Googled candidate of all time. Everybody wants to know more about this person once they see her. They go, well, she's saying some interesting things. Oh, she's saying some things that kind of line up with what I believe in. What else does she believe in? Can I vote for her? I wonder if I can, if, if, if this is a candidate that I can vote for. What they're doing by changing these rules is not transparency. The DNC wanted, the DNC came out, oh, we're going to be transparent. We're, I mean, we learned from 2016, you guys. <laughs> we learned. We learned our lesson. This is an abusive relationship with the American populace and, and democracy that the Democratic Party has. They're like a fucking abusive partner. That's what they are. This is not transparency. You changing the rules halfway through the fucking game just because there, there's somebody uh, that you don't agree with because they're not sucking the corporate dick. Just because they're not doing that and they speak out against your shit. Tulsi Gabbard calls out the, the DNC all the time for their bullshit. All the time she does that. And this is the problem that I have with Bernie right now, is Bernie's kind of leaning into that Russiagate narrative. He doesn't really push back on the DNC a whole lot. You know, this whole my friend Joe Biden thing that he keeps doing. Uh, you know, I like, I love Bernie. I, I, you know, I think everybody everybody knows that. Is, is I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge supporter of Bernie. I'm also a huge supporter of Tulsi. And I think, I think where uh, Bernie lacks, Tulsi picks up on, is she goes after these people. Bernie has to play a little bit of uh, 3D chess on this on, on this election, right? He kind of has to play a little coy and be friends and do the thing and shake the hand and rub the shoulders uh, in order to get that message out. You got to kind of, oh, my friend, my friend Joe Biden thinks Iraq was something that we needed to bomb. And I, I voted, you know, you got to get those ideas out there. I get it. But ah, come on, man. Being a little soft on these people, you know, and, and and at this point in the in the game, I think being a little soft on these people is not what we need. I am a supporter of both of these candidates, and I will continue to be a supporter of both of these candidates. Tulsi goes after him. Tulsi calls out that McCarthyist bullshit all the time. I did a whole fucking video about it, about about her calling out that McCarthyism stuff. I talked about it in Forkful of Noodles. And it's just some bullshit, dude, that, that, that she is being barred out. And this is also, um, you know, <coughs> another thing that's kind of been bothering me as of late is, uh, well, not even as of late, it's been bothering me for fucking months, right? I am a supporter of both of these candidates, but I see, I see other supporters of each of these individual candidates. Supporters of Bernie Sanders exclusively, supporters of Tulsi Gabbard exclusively, and they just go after each other on social media, calling each other names. Ron Placone just talked about it on his Twitter. Uh, of all the names that he's been called, just by Bernie supporters and Tulsi supporters, I've known Ron for uh, just just a little over a decade, and I can fucking tell you that that guy. Is, is like one of the truest progressives in this fucking country. He's one of the truest progressive comedy uh, co co comedians in this fucking country. And you have supporters of progressive candidates uh, that that uh, that shit on. I mean, I, I've watched I've watched uh, uh, com you know commentators that are that are uh, 
of f full on for Bernie and commentators that are full on for Tulsi go after each other and say some really horrific things to each other. People that I like, people that I watch, people that I support, you know? And, and they were saying some genuinely horrific shit to each other. We do not need that in the progressive movement. We don't need the infighting on the ground level. Things are difficult as it is fighting the fucking neoliberals, fighting the, 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 the corporate oligarchy. That's hard. That's a tough job. Why are we fucking nitpicking over the mascots? Fucking pointless. It's fucking pointless. And what doesn't help is, you know, there there is a media blackout on Tulsi. People people like when I've brought up Tulsi, there people are like, oh man, oh she's still here. Yeah, she's still fucking here. She's still running. She's still in the game. She's still out there campaigning, doing town halls, doing the house the house show meetings and stuff. She's still fucking here. She's still vehemently anti war. And it's a media blackout. And why is there a media blackout? Well, it's because she pushed back against the Queen. She pushed back against Hillary Clinton. They 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 gave they gave her the Bernie treatment real hard in the very beginning. What they did to Bernie in 2016, the way that they they, they were smearing Bernie, uh, they put all those tactics in place uh, it, it, with Tulsi in 2019. Last year, they put all that stuff in place, right? They, I mean, every other week. Every time that she would, she would be the most Google candidate, they would they would uh, put out some kind of a, uh, a false think piece about, oh, she used to do this. Well, she doesn't do that anymore. That's called growth. Well, she did, wait a minute, your article doesn't mention anything past fucking 1994 about what she believes on this topic. Why is that? That's curious. They made a big stink about her coming from a, uh, an anti-LGBTQ conservative uh, conservative family, and uh, and she did, and she has no, she's she's not shy about it. She talks about it. She says, "Yeah, I grew up, you know. Uh, I I looked at what these beliefs were, and uh, I I, I, re I re regrettably I had them because I didn't know any better, and now that I do know any do know better, I fought." for the rights of LGBTQ people, especially discrimination in the workplace. I, 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 you know, she has a 100% rating from the Human Rights Commission. Because she fought for the rights of the LGBTQ community and they tried to smear her and then they, you know, because, because they don't understand what Hinduism is or how Hinduism operates and, you know, uh, they, they, again, it's like, we got to demonize her for something. Let's demonize her for this this religion that, that people really kind of fucking don't know a whole lot about. Uh, and uh, and they did. And they found this guy. Uh, and he's a weird guy. I, I, I've, done, I've done a little homework on the fella. Uh, she, she practices the, the same form of Hinduism this guy practices, right? So I don't even remember what the fuck his name is. Uh, anymore, but uh, this this gentleman is is an American gentleman that that practices a very specific form of uh, of Hinduism that that is a branch off of the Hare Krishna movement, which is already kind of a controversial movement within Hinduism anyway. Uh, and uh, and she pra Tulsi practices uh, um, uh, I think Vinyasva Vin Vinyasa. One of the two. I can't remember exactly which specific one. I think it's vinyasa. But forgive me for for being a little, little uneducated about about the specifics on this. But uh, that's what she practices. And, and every time she was like, "This is what I practice. I don't go to that thing anymore." Oh, but you were at a thing where they had a photo of the guy. It's like, yeah, man. Our our prayer room when I was a kid had a photo of a couple different people just regular ass people like my great grandparents we had a photo of that in the prayer room we had a uh, there was a priest that uh, 
that I think my grandfather knew. We had a photo of him. What are you talking about? Your fucking churches have a bunch of dead regular ass people stained glassed into them. People worship Joel Olstein. People worship Donald Trump. Every fucking American household has a picture of the president that people will fucking, uh, you know, treat as a deity. What are you talking about? You don't have an understanding of what this philosophy or religion is and you're going to make a judgment call about it? Just because you don't like this candidate, you got to figure some shit out to try to, like, demonize. So now Hindus are demonized, right? Muslims were demonized. Now Hindus are demonized. That's what the establishment... These are Democrats, by the way. These are Democrats doing it. You see where the Democratic Party really lies. See who they're actually for. Don't give a shit about diversity. Tulsi Gabbard matches all of their fucking identities. She is... She is Hindu. She's an alternative on religion. She's a woman. Everybody's been pretty t- talking about having a woman in the White House. She is a not white person. She's Polynesian. All these fucking people that that uh, that believe in everything Bernie was saying, right? But they're like, oh, I just can't vote for a white man. Another old white man. I can't vote. I'm gonna go with Elizabeth Warren because uh, you know, fuck fuck my principles. I'm gonna go with the identity. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna vote with what's in between somebody's pain, what's in between somebody's legs, that I will over over the fucking principles and policies that they uh, that they express. God, identity politics is gonna be the death, the death of American politics. Identity politics is gonna be the death of the Democratic Party for sure. And the Democratic Party, they, I mean, they're just doing it to fucking use your identity to to levy votes and and make money off of you. They don't really care. In fact, and now you have two candidates that do give a shit and one of them is not going to be allowed because there's a media blackout on her. Lies and smears. And then after that, you had the McCarthyism thing when when Hillary Clinton came out and, and called her a Russian agent on a podcast with an Obama advisor. And oh boy, there was uproar about that. Boy, oh boy, was there uproar about that. But it failed. No, not enough people bought into it, including, I mean, there were some, like, corporate mainstream pundits that were just like, hey, I don't, this is a bad idea, what you're doing. This is a really, you know, I talked about it on Fork Full of Noodles, did a whole thing about the McCarthyism thing, talked about how this is, how this is, this is, going to come bite us in the ass. This is just an evolution of McCarthyism. McCarthyism never went away. It just it just kind of changed and evolved. That's what it did. And if it's not a media blackout, if they are covering her, they don't really talk about uh, what her beliefs and what her policies are, what she has achieved in, in, in Congress, in the House of Representatives, how, how she has really gone across the aisle and talked to Republican senators, or sorry, Republican uh, representatives, and, and said, hey, I really think you should be behind this bill. This is really good. Th- this will help your constituents. Because she didn't go up to them and go, hey, you racist piece of shit, misogynistic motherfucker. No, she sat down and said, tell me what your constituents are worried about. Why are you against this bill? Why do you think this bill won't help your constituents? Because I really think that will. T- t- get, get, t- tell me look, some of the concerns. What, what, is it a priority issue? Is it is it a financial issue? What what's going on? Let, how can I how can I help? How can I help you? My constituents and your constituents. She's done that. That's that's a huge part of her message. Is it about money? Oh, okay. There's a corporation involved. I got it. 
We'd love your support. You know, like, that's... And if they black her out, and if it's her, if it's if it's not them blacking her out, when they talk about her in the media, they don't talk about any of her her ideologies or anything, right? And, but they'll call her the unusual candidate. She's a very unusual candidate. Oh man, she's so unusual, you guys. Oh, what's unusual about her? This is what's unusual about her, according to corporate media, right? That she's anti-war. She speaks out against regime change war. She thinks that we should not be uh, putting economic sanctions on other countries just because we don't like their leaders, just because we want to install puppet regimes and take other people's resources. What an unusual thing to think. She believes in Medicare for all. She, she, she has the Australian version of Medicare for all, which, which I don't think is a bad idea at all. I like it. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of both Bernie's idea, Jayapal's idea, and, and Tulsi's idea. I think we need you know, different ways of, uh, of approaching this problem in order to make sure that every American has health care. But, but that's, her, that's her point. Her point is uh, we, we need, uh, we, everybody would be enrolled, everybody would be in the system. And then if you want something extra, if you want something uh, like your own specific doctor, or, or if you want uh, you know, reconstructive surgery or whatever, you can get the insurance. Uh, pay for the insurance and and go ahead and and get your doctor. I have no I have no problems with that. Uh, I I know I, Ber, I mean I know Bernie's even talked about that, right? Oh, but but oh my God, you want to actually take care of sick people? What an unusual thing to do! Taking care of sick people? No, no, no. They need to die, like the like the the plagues on the humanity that they are. That's what that's what corporate media believes unusual to take care of your sick people not have them riddled with medical debt not punish them for getting sick how dare you not be the the perfect the 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 perfect adonis of american health that we need you to be how dare you get sick she wants to hold banks accountable Unusual? What? No, we let the banks do whatever they want. We'll bail them out. We'll give them the money. We'll just fucking let them do. We'll just slap on their... Hey, hey, you stop it over there. Hey, you stop. You stop exploiting poor people. Get out of here, you silly goose, you. No, she's like, no, I think we need to hold these fuckers accountable for, for wrecking the economy. What an unusual thing to do. She wants to legalize marijuana. Oh my God! What an un... Oh my God! Colorado made a billion dollars in 2018. Holy shit! Off of just marijuana sales, taxable income right there. She wants to make sure that uh, people are taken care of. The the uh, the the b- b- vast amount of medical uses that that cannabis has. What an unusual thing. She talks about criminal justice reform, through, especially through the lens of, of the marijuana argument. Oh, what an unusual thing. She doesn't want, she doesn't want a, a, a criminal justice system that's profiting off of prisoners. She doesn't want a criminal justice system that, that penalizes you for nonviolent crimes and is skewed on the racial level because more black people go to prison for marijuana crimes than white people, despite the fact that white people and black people smoke weed at the same amount. Unusual! Spot for LGBTQ worker rights, making sure that they don't get discriminated against, making sure that they don't get less pay or get fired or, or don't get hired at all because of uh, because of their sexuality, because of what they identify as. What an unusual thing! She it, like she cares about who you are as a person. What a, what? That's so unusual. The only person you're supposed to care about in America is yourself. Okay, and Jesus. Okay, you care about Jesus. And you're, if you care about anybody, I know Jesus says care about your fellow man, but don't care about that part. Jesus was very high, and he probably should have been in prison. But but the other stuff where you know where he says like stone the gays, you know that part, you know that part, that part care about that. But and yourself, and you care about yourself, caring about other people, unusual. What a that's weird. Makes us feel weird inside. It doesn't make us money. This is the media thinks all of what Tulsi Gabbard believes in is unusual, and these are all things that I think are progressive values. 
And they're fucking her out of the debates now, too. So, so here, here's the thing, right? She did make it into the last couple of debates. Um, uh, and there were a couple of, uh, the, like, the new, let's go through the... Kim Iverson broke these down. Uh, great YouTube channel, by the way. If you, if you haven't checked out Kim Iverson, I highly recommend it. Um, Kim Iverson broke this down. And uh, she basically, before the, uh, the New Hampshire debates... Uh, You have to get 5% in four national polls or 7% in three early state polls, uh, plus 225,000 unique donors. Uh, I think she hit the unique donors number. I think she always hits that unique donor number. Uh, And one delegate from Iowa. Uh, That's what what you needed to get on uh, that stage. I don't don't know if she she hit those numbers. Um, And then for Nevada, you needed uh, 12% in two early voting states and 10%. Uh, in uh, this, this is Nevada and South Carolina 10% in four national polls Or just one delegate right? If you got a delegate You, you, you got in uh, uh, Bloomberg had uh, none of these things He just had uh, uh, What is it? Money Change the rules So a billionaire racist Can get into your debate To make some of your Boring candidates sound cool That's what they did Uh, So you know They're probably going to have similar thresholds Going forward uh, For Tulsi Gabbard And uh, uh, I mean she qualifies The the one delegate thing they're going to be like No you need like a thousand delegates To get How many delegates does Joe Biden have? You need that many. And this is Joe Biden standing on stage alone by himself and somehow, somehow still fucking things up. But they do not want her on that fucking debate stage. They're scared of Tulsi Gabbard being on that debate stage. Right? They they are. They're fucking terrified of her being on that debate stage because... uh, uh, they're gonna. He, she's gonna make Joe Biden look like shit. Look, and regardless of what you feel about Tulsi, right? I don't. Really, I don't really care whether you're pro or or anti Tulsi or whatever you are. Uh, this is not democracy. She is running for president. She is one of three candidates left that is running for president, and you are actively barring her voice. You are actively showing her supporters that you do not give a shit about them. I mean, you're running the same dumbass playbook that they ran in 2016 that got them nowhere. You ignored a whole bunch of this country. You basically showed them that you don't care about them. What you care about is big, big money donors. You care about corporations. You care about oligarchies, billionaires. You care about liberal elites. That's what that and and nobody and there nobody's gonna vote for that. This is political censorship. An anti-war voice cannot get on a debate stage? What? That's the biggest fear that they have. Joe Biden has... A, his foreign policies are worse than Trump's. This guy is atrocious on foreign policy. This is trash foreign policies. And fucking Tulsi Gabbard will hand him his ass. And here's the thing: a lot of us, a lot of people are political hobbyists. They they just watch it for the sport of the politics, right? They want to be able to debate with their friends. They they, they want to be able to sound smart, but they don't want, they don't want to really participate in in the politics, right? They don't want to hit the pavement. Uh, they, they don't they don't want to engage in it. They don't they don't want to think about local. They don't want to support uh, small businesses and, and and activist communities and protests and stuff. These are always the same people that watch. All of these po- the, these political pundits, and then when there's actual activists on the ground that are fighting against, you know, some sort of injustice, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I'm against that injustice, but man, can you just not be so loud about it and actually like try to get things done?" Because I'm against the, but like the injustice isn't really affecting me, so I don't really have to care. Like these are the same fucking people, and those people blindly fucking vote for Joe Biden because they don't want to delve deeper, they don't want to look into these things, they don't want to actually have a real discussion, they want to have the pop culture debates. They want to call Trump a Cheeto and, and feel good about themselves and pat them on the back. Oh, we watched Trevor Noah. That's we watched the, we watched the attractive black millionaire on television. That's very nice, isn't it? We're we're good people. Yeah. 
you support the other black comic that's going out there and talking about uh, the Black Panther movement? you support any other minority comedians that are actually delving deeper into it? No, we like the famous one. That's, that's the nice one. He's a nice boy. He's handsome. His eyes look nice. These guys will blindly fucking vote for Joe Biden. Tulsi would push Joe Biden on foreign policy and uh, uh, and point out uh, that he really doesn't have a plan. And his foreign policies uh, all line up with uh, with what the CIA, the State Department, the Pentagon all want. Uh, they all line up with, with virtually what Trump is doing, what Mike Pompeo and John Bolton are doing. He'll put more economic sanctions on Venezuela. He'll put more economic sanctions on Iran. He'll be more aggressive about it. He'll fuck more things up in Syria. He'll fuck more things up in Yemen. He'll sell more weapons to Saudi Arabia. He'll create more tensions in Latin America. He'll create more enemies. He'll get xenophobic about Russia. Because he's another one. He's another fucking guy that needs to prove how tough he is. Because he's from that era. Is that era of just like, I'm, I'm a big man. Look at me be the big man. Like, that's just, that's what Joe does all the time. That's what Biden does all the time. Biden, Biden's also incredibly disrespectful. Biden's also, uh, he talks down to a ton of people. Uh, I was listening to Aaron Mate's uh, podcast, Pushback, another great podcast people should li- be listening to. And he was uh, talking to Scott Ritter. He's a former uh, UN weapons inspector. And, and Joe Biden fucking talked down to this guy uh, because, you know, he was he was saying, I think we need to get, get in there and do this inspection. We need to go into these sites and do this inspection. We can't escalate tensions with, with Iraq. And Biden didn't want that. So he talked down to him, called him Scotty Boy. He, you know, he, he, and he was basically like, you want control. You want power, Scott. That's really the reason why Joe Biden does not want, did not want those, uh, those inspections is because uh, he didn't want to be proved wrong about that weapons of mass destruction narrative that they had to push through. This is fucking Joe Biden, man. He's a disrespectful, arrogant old man that, that just wants to prove that he's a big, tough boy. And he has zero foreign policy issues. And they don't want Tulsi to go up against that. What, what really sucks about this too is, I don't, you know, I don't see Sanders standing up for her. I think Sanders needs to make a statement saying that, hey, this is unfair. She's one of three candidates left. Her voice needs to be heard on stage. Her supporters need to see that representation. This is unfair. That's how you unite that progressive movement. And I've said this a, a, a multiple different times, and I, and I think I do believe that it bears uh, bears repeating right here. Is um, look, Bernie wins, Tulsi wins, Biden wins, Trump wins. Whoever wins, the fight's not over. Just because your guy got in doesn't mean that we get everything that we want. I think we can fool ourselves in, in believing that, but if we're not going to be critical, if we're not going to be objective, and if we're not going to stay vigilant and actually fight the forces that need to be fought for, then we're not going to achieve real progress in this country. The way I look at it is, is a lot of these politicians wind up being mascots. That's what they are in my book. They are mascots for ideologies. Sanders is the mascot for democratic socialism. Tulsi is the mascot for, for anti-war stuff and for a variety of other things, right? You know, Joe Biden is a mascot for dementia. Like, that's what they are. So let's keep the fight going regardless. I don't want to see Tulsi supporters shit on Bernie supporters. I don't, I don't want to see it. Zero value in that. Zero fucking value in that. And if that's already happened, maybe apologize. Hey, I was in the wrong. You know, I, 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 things are getting desperate. I'm getting dire. Say so. I don't, it doesn't matter. Get together. Figure out how you can help each other. Use them as examples on how to live your life. It was so fascinating whenever I said something about Marianne Williamson in a video once. And, I mean, I had a bunch of people, you know, I had some people, very nice people that were like, hey, I think, uh, you know, you should look at her website, look at her policies, read some of her 
uh, listen to some of her essays, listen to some of her or some of her videos, uh, and and those people were encouraging to me to, to look into her a little bit and learn a little bit more about her and be more objective about about my my opinion on her. But then there was like a bunch of people who I mean she's kind of like this peace and love kind of lady, right? And they were just like, you fucking asshole, we I, I should punch your face into the ground. And it's just like, how are you a Marianne Williamson fucking? Supporter, and you're threatening to put my face into the ground. Jesus balls, dude. If Sanders backed her up, uh, I think that would really co- that would really start uniting the the progressive movement. And look, Tulsi's fucking been there with them the entire time. She, she has backed up Bernie Sanders every single time there was a smear or an attack against him. When they were saying some egregious, outrageous shit about him, Tulsi Gabbard came out and backed him up. They, she backed him up in Iowa. She backed him up whenever Elizabeth Warren was saying some shit about him. And, and it's just disappointing that there's no reciprocation for Bernie on that end. If you want real unity, I think that's what Bernie needs to do. Uh, I, I, I hope that I hope Bernie Sanders will will, will stand up and, and say something about uh, Tulsi Gabbard needing to be on that debate stage. I, I really I really do. I really hope uh, that, that he does. There's only three left, guys. There's only three left, and one of them is not allowed to say things on national television because they're scared. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and and subscribe to this channel. I talk about uh, this sort of stuff often. Uh, I talk about politics, sociology, psychology, uh, comic books, uh, pop culture. So, sometimes some pop culture stuff comes up as well. Uh, but uh, some of the videos are more ranty and loose like this. Some of them are more written and more produced. Uh, some of them are just audio. Some of them are stand-up videos because I'm also a stand-up comedian. So uh, please uh, make sure that you, you subscribe and come back to the channel. Hit that bell to make sure that you uh, are, are absolutely going to get notifications about when I put videos up. Uh, I'm going to be performing live stand-up comedy. Uh, I'm going to be go- touring uh, uh, to, to a lot of different places uh, and uh, if you enjoyed this content, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the ideas that we talked about in this video, you will probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy. And I am going to be in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, Moline, Illinois, in the Quad Cities area, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, and I'm also recording my brand new stand-up comedy album live uh, March 20th in Washington, D.C., March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, April 2nd through the 4th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, I'm also coming to Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I'm going to also be in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Knoxville, Tennessee, Cincinnati, Ohio, and and a bunch more places. Uh, And I'm also going to be opening for my good friend Lee Camp. Uh, Lee Lee is on his book tour. Uh, released his brand new book, and I'm I'm uh, honored to be to be opening for him in uh, in a lot of these shows. Uh, Eleanor Goldfield is is also going to be performing some spoken word pieces and uh, some musical pieces in some of these shows as well. Uh, so we are coming to Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and a bunch of different places. Uh, for, for the entire tour schedule, including my dates with Lee, you can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. The link is in the description of the video. Uh, I hope some of you guys come out uh, to these live comedy shows and, and hang out and we can get weird and talk about these ideas. Uh, and another way that you can help this show is by, by sharing out this content. Uh, ideas and content like this doesn't usually get shown to a whole lot of people uh, so it really depends on people liking and sharing uh, to boost this up to, to so that it does get recommended to people so that it does get seen uh, by a lot more people and uh, you can also financially help to contribute to the show 
by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Gives you a bunch of rewards and, uh, and, and helps us hit a, hit a bunch of the goals that we're trying to hit uh, with these shows. Uh, and uh, another way to help is by becoming uh, a sustaining member over on Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, that gives you collections of stand-up comedy material every single week. Uh, you can also become a sustaining member on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. And for everybody that's already become sustaining members, uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and, you know, the people that are subscribed and share this out, and share these videos out uh, to, 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 to groups and, and things of that sort, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You guys fucking rule. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I hope new, new, new listeners will, will, will become, uh, returning listeners will become subscribers, will become patrons. Uh, and I appreciate, uh, all, all the comments and all the views that, uh, that these videos get. Uh, anyway. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much and we will see you on the road. Bye.